Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's weekend frivolity. Le broiler chickens. There's six viewers. <laughs> Man, crypto sure has calmed down of late, eh? Um, anyway, I hope. Uh, oh, hey, we just went up one. <laughs> That's cool. I always have fun uh, barking about that. I mean, it's kind of irrelevant. I do know that, uh, you know, if people are like, Brian, your silly videos are three hours long. <laughs> I'm not going to show up right at the beginning. I'll watch it uh, next Tuesday at three times speed because there's no way I can sit through three hours <laughs> right from the get-go. And I totally appreciate it. That's cool. I, I mean, if anything, what I really hope about this whole uh, experience is you guys are just absolutely overwhelmed with information. And you can just sit and mine, 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 mine. So... We'll say, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, welcome back to the frivolity. And uh, oh, I see there's a few people over there on YouTube. Uh, hello, Sheba. I uh, don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly. Matthew, Thomas. Uh, the herd is running in. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Dimitri. D Dimitri. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um and I see a few people here in the uh, in the lounge with me, so uh, hopefully we'll have a fun uh, edutainment-filled experience here today. <laughs> Never know where these conversations will, will take us. Um, and if anything, I have to feel very, very pleased uh, with number one. Um, I would say TRI's uh, evolution uh, at the moment. We're going through a very interesting evolutionary phase right now. Um, and that often happens, right? Uh, I've now been basically actively in the crypto space since 2013. And so I've literally seen two full developer cycles. Uh, not... Um, uh, you know, uh, public comes in and pays stupid prices <laughs> cycles, but the actual developer part of the cycles, which uh, in essence lays the foundation because we do all this work and then next cycle comes along, of course, prices are washed out and there's all this work that's been done and people go, hey, maybe there's some value in that. And then, of course, we got a happening, which totally changes the conversation and reminds uh, people about the scarcity of Bitcoin and all that kind of wonderfulness. And off we go again, right? And then prices get bid up to ridiculous levels. The insiders, developers, they take profits, ring the register, they get paid for their hard work. That's the whole point of this exercise of price discovery, ironically. Uh, and sadly, of course, the public often gets sucked in up at the top. And we do it all over again. So, uh, you know, as I said, I, I've been through this now in crypto now, at least uh, two or three cycles. Uh, and uh, I, I worked, uh, first job I got in the stock market was in 1988. And, um, you know, that was just a high school punk kind of thing. But it, uh, that, ironically enough, that was my favorite job, uh, that, that, that summer job in 1988. That was my favorite job by far. In my experience working in the stock market uh, as a credit control clerk, uh, liquidating people's under margin positions, <laughs> the evil people, uh, the, 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 the credit desk. <laughs> Nobody ever liked to get a call from us. No, no. In fact, my favorite stock market story was this guy lived in the middle of uh, Saskatchewan, which is, uh, you know, if you're, if you know what Canada is, you know, Saskatchewan is, uh, on the prairies and it's colder than stink and um the guy uh strapped and back then you had like five day settlement uh for uh for stock so you could like buy a stock on monday and you wouldn't have to pay for it till friday but 
you know, five days uh, comes along, and of course uh, the guy hasn't paid, and uh, literally calling him up on the on the horn. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we need the money in the account by the end of business today, or we have to liquidate your account. And uh, and and they, you know, this is a full service brokerage house where they at least give you the courtesy. You get interestingly enough in this 21st century with the way you guys have been sort of all computerized you don't even get that luxury it's just you're liquidated see you later buddy <laughs> not not even thinking twice and uh crypto i mean crypto is merciless hell half the time in crypto the guys running the exchange don't even speak the language you speak <laughs> anyway um this guy uh Call him up five uh, five days later, and the best excuse ever. And like I said, it always seems to happen that the best stories in your life always happen when you're a kid. Anyway, the guy, <laughs> the guy he goes, uh, there, there was a flash frost, which actually could theoretically happen in Saskatchewan. It's so cold there, and, you know, Jesus, you get these, these frosts out of nowhere. So there's this uh, flash frost. And uh, he buried his money, and the ground froze, and so he can't get to it. <laughs> and, you know, back in the 1930s, of course, there was uh, bank failures all over the place. And actually, interesting where their history repeats itself, maybe with the whole uh, 2008 financial crisis and uh, quantitative easing and stuff, maybe we will avoid that this time. But back in the 1930s, like, geez, I think like three out of four banks failed. And that meant your money was gone. See you later. So people who lived through that period, they never kept their money in the bank because that was dangerous. Uh, so uh, you were um, uh, a lot of people actually just had their money at home. Right. And they buried it in the backyard. So anyway, kind of a funny story. So uh, the. Uh, and and the, the the obviously this went to the boss and I remember my, the boss of the department I can't remember what his name was anyway interesting guy he actually for a moment said you know that's that's one of the best lines I've ever heard I think I'm gonna give him another day or two <laughs> just because it was such a good line and it was just so perfectly Canadian <laughs> I think he ended up selling him out anyway but anyway uh so uh you know i've been working in this business forever um and i enjoy it uh really uh uh if if you don't you know actually it's weird this reminds me of another story i remember uh actually the same year i worked in the same firm and there's one guy and he worked in the operations department if you understand the operations department that's where people you go you literally go to rot and die because all they do is they just push paper around, you know, like your margin clerk guy. He doesn't actually get to do any underwriting and he's not making a fortune, you know, trading and all that. So I remember another guy, uh, um, I asked him, um, and, and he was like, Oh my God, you're young. Get out of here. <laughs> you, you don't belong here. Just you're young, go and play sports, have fun. Just get the hell out of this office now. <laughs> it's just so funny. But anyway, so you can tell the people that are, are gnarly old timers in this business, they have a, a different uh, a perspective of, of this. But uh, yeah, you catch that bug or you don't. And I think it's really that simple. You know, like uh, Jojo, my wife, I tell you guys, uh, she never, uh, she hated numbers, hated numbers with a passion. Never liked to look at price charts, hated looking at my price screens, all those kind of things. So anyway, go figure. To each his own. I've got the bug. I've had the bug forever, and of course, uh, I'm I'm like I said, exceedingly pleased to see that uh, TRI is now uh, entering into this 21st century with just some fantastic tools. Uh, we've taken advantage of uh, um, uh, very intelligent community of ours. I think. Uh, a lot of sort of this stuff that I sort of dragged from my 1980s website into the 21st century, I think is very applicable in the crypto space. And then uh, ironically enough, you know, this whole sort of trading kind of stuff is really more uh, about what's going on between your ears than it is about, 
computers and squiggly lines. So what's cool is Sjord has actually now given me the tools. And ironically enough, I think, you know, I hate to say it, but I think this is actually the most valuable tool you could possibly have when it comes to trading. And all it is is just, I mean, hell, you can do it on a cocktail napkin. Uh, you can do it on a uh, computer. Uh, I had one student send me, in fact, I showed a bunch of people at the other day, just the most beautiful leather bound uh, uh, physical journal. So it's almost, it's a, it's a piece of artwork <laughs> that he sent me. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can do it journaling on the back of a cocktail napkin. I don't really care. But the point is, is that, uh, you know, now integrated into the site and integrated into the way that uh, I would like to see uh, TRIers use the site going forward are tools that actually have very little to do with squiggly lines and everything to do with trying to manage yourself and manage your emotions and hold yourself accountable to your own behavior. And frankly speaking, I think that's actually where most people fail when it comes to this trading stuff. So, uh, you know, this weekend I thought was a really, really good testament. We, um, on the site recently, we, uh, a few of us that are very serious. First off, we'd really like to, uh, to put together like an actual physical trading location for TRI. Um, I don't know whether it's just pig-headed stubbornness on my part, but I've had this vision now for about two or, th yeah, I guess about two or three years, really probably since the start of the whole COVID craziness, uh, where we have to take this from the sort of, strictly digital experience online all that and actually have a physical manifestation of this uh thing called tri and like a campus so um, i've been working away diligently on the whole idea and the project and of course saving lots of money as much as i can um we're going to, uh, this year, uh, take a really serious look. We might actually pull the trigger here uh, through the end of the year. We did initially try to think about it, and, you know, all those old TRIers uh, I did a couple of years ago put together a proposal for us to consider this uh, campus in Hawaii. There was a real estate developer there locally who did have a piece of property that if all of the ducks lined up just perfectly we could have pulled something off uh ducks didn't align so no big deal uh you know unfortunately in in life and kind of like in you know trading as well i mean really you have to if you see the setup and everything aligns perfectly you pull the trigger if you don't you don't do nothing so anyway that didn't pan out but for those people who are watching this video, and of course, I'll put sort of tweets out. Hey, all you guys who used to be interested, pay attention. We're really starting to focus now. Um, we've uh, seemed to have sort of congealed on uh, Western Europe and more importantly, uh, the pigs nations because they're, they're kind of on the outs. Uh, the inflation boom that's going on crazy and in places like North America, it doesn't seem to be affecting the pigs nations too much uh, property price wise, just as of yet. That may change, of course, but um, there are still a few places that look relatively attractive budget wise. So <coughs> we're getting very serious about, uh, about that. And to that end, of course, uh, we need to go kick the tires on a few of these places. So it seemed only logical. Uh, we've sort of focused our attention because of the crypto-friendly nature of uh, the great country of Portugal. Um, we've um, we've uh, focused our attention um, on uh, Portugal, like I said, because of you know, the crypto. They also have a golden visa uh, package, which looks kind of appealing for Eurozone, but uh, we decided uh, we, uh, we'd we like to uh, have a meetup in uh, Nazare, 
got to make sure I pronounce that correctly. There's a guy on this site <laughs> holds my feet to the fire every time I mispronounce it. So I hope I got it right for you there. <laughs> anyway, point of the matter is, uh, and actually Josh put this little uh, this little graphic together. It's kind of cute, eh? I, I, he's got quite a talent for this kind of stuff. They, we might have, their logo might change slightly uh, between now and then. But I, uh, we had a meeting just this past weekend to sort of confirm uh, the, the trip details, uh, bookings, uh, and a whole bunch of places we're considering going and looking at to seriously purchase. But at the same time, too, yeah, I thought maybe we'd have a nice little social gathering uh, in, um, uh, on the coast there in Portugal in September. So if you uh, happen to be in the European area, and uh, you would like to uh, participate in the meetup, you know, feel free uh, to, um, you know, we do have the 30-day trial. So you can always pop on the site uh, for the 30-day trial and just, you know, let it be known that you are interested and would like to, um, to uh, I suppose you could also reply here. Uh, also, maybe I should, uh, um, and actually, I probably should have hashtagged uh, TRI's. Um, I don't even know how I do that. But uh, Josh, I wonder if Josh maybe can uh, retweet this on the TRI PMA page. And then, uh, you know, if you are in the public and you want to also to, uh, I don't know, we could probably do it somehow through uh, through this YouTube page as well. That's another social media. We also have the Facebook thing, so maybe we'll do that as well. And actually, uh, one of our site members here who's uh, suggesting some marketing ideas says, uh, Brian, get off your butt and get on to Instagram, you bum. There's a whole audience there that uh, you're completely missing out on. <laughs> so you might find us on Instagram here shortly, too. Who knows? Um, anyway, point of the matter here is uh, we have this meetup coming here in September. Uh, weekend of September 17th, 18th. And if you'd like to uh, come hang out with us a little bit, we are we have a nice place, uh, I think, booked uh, in uh, Nazareth. In fact, actually, a couple of places I think we have uh, booked. Uh, so we'd love to see you. And, of course, uh, if you did, you know, we did, uh, I think I'll probably start sending emails out to, to the group, uh, those people that were interested in participating in the sort of financing of this campus idea from uh, we were originally thinking Hawaii, but uh, now we're uh, thinking uh, Western Portugal, uh, or I guess Western Europe, but from Portugal. Um, I, I'm going to send out an email to that. And if you're still slightly interested in participating in that, um, um, I guess we ought to get uh, after we come back from the meetup and we've actually seen a few of these places, if any of them go, we go, holy wow, that was cool. Let's go for that then uh we'll get that ball ball rolling so anyway super cool uh, exciting stuff so uh early september would love to see you uh in portugal uh of course love to see you on the site anyway um if anything if you are thinking about being a student of tri now is the perfect time to consider joining because uh, the classes are really small. In fact, I know there's one guy in the level two class that basically he's uh, he's very active uh, in the uh, weekly sessions with Kirad, and he's basically getting like a personal walkthrough of the entire course material. And wow, Marat just blew everybody's mind uh, on Friday with his work with WD Gan. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think if anything, uh, and I was suggesting, I don't think he's here today, but uh, if anything, I think what we need is a Marat Gan channel on TRI, just like Stephen has his uh, uh, harmonics channel. I think Marat needs his Gan channel. And I think a lot of you would uh, be uh, Marat uh, followers. Uh, man, he's doing some great work there with WD Gan on Friday. Well, that was a real privilege to uh, watch him in action. And that's, you know, that's the one thing I really like about TRI is that uh, on balance, Brian's, you know, I worked in the industry forever. So I've dipped my toes in a lot of different subjects and fields and stuff. I think I'm a pretty good, uh, you know, you know, I was really, really good community tennis coach. <laughs> I could take anybody. In fact, I used to teach tennis to two-year-olds, <laughs> but uh, I could take anybody. 
and uh, you know, you listen to me, five fundamentals of tennis, work with me for about a month or two, I'll have you play in tennis. Yeah, pretty good, you know, community league, probably like C League. Um, and I, you know, I do remember one group after my wife passed away, I did basically uh, get them all from not knowing anything to actually have, uh, they had a community tennis league going um, by the time I was done with them. So anyway, same sort of thing with trading. Uh, I think I have the fundamentals down pretty good. Um, and of course, probably the most important thing about all of this is the process and uh, it's my privilege to teach you all the process. Uh, and um, what are some of the sort of hacks that I've figured out over the years uh, to try and make the process a little easier? And I'll tell you, I said it there a minute ago, and actually I put out quite a tweet about it today. Um, Number one way that you're going to get better in your trading, no ifs, no ands, no buts, except uh, Brian's big butt. Man, it seems to be growing by the year. Anyway, <laughs> the only way you're going to get better at trading, I can absolutely guarantee you, is you have to get journaling. Journaling, journaling, journaling. You have to do it. And I'm, I mean, I've literally worked with people now. Uh, I mean, like, of course. When I was a broker, uh, a lot of guys, what's really interesting is I think actually most of the people in the world actually go through almost exactly the same experience when they come to investing, trading. It's it's so stunningly cliche. And the irony of it all is that I still tell you guys, right, you know, recessions usually happen in years that end in eights, nine, zeros, ones, and twos. Oh boy, here we are in a year two, and fucking the world looks like it's going to hell in a handbasket. But it's weird, you know, like in uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, nobody really listens. Or they kind of go, yeah, okay, Brian, sure, whatever. And here we are, we're in the shit, and I hear that there's a lot of people that are like 100% invested. Uh, and, and you see what's going on in the world, and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, we have a really cool expression, and I have to say, it actually comes from one of my students who I think is going to be a very, very good investor over the long term. Uh, but a gentleman who used to uh, be in my weekly show uh, on crypto on Wednesdays, uh, Nick, he goes, man, this feels like hard mode. They're going to come back when it's in easy mode. <laughs> for now, I'm retiring, Brian. And frankly speaking, Nick, that was, that's a pretty damn good read. So point with an image like this is actually, ironically enough, this is actually a bearish idea. So uh, I suppose while the market is correcting and things are cleaning themselves up, my big message to the community is that doesn't mean you can't make money for trading. It just means that and eh, you're going to have to be able to do things like day trade, swing trade. Um, and I run, and well, I suppose what's interesting is uh, somebody even um, uh, put on uh, the lounge that there are even poop coins that are going ballistic here in this type of market. So, you know, ironically enough, seasonally, this is supposed to be a friendly time of year. So the fact that the market is as struggling as much as it is, is probably yet another testament to, oh man, this is hard mode. Why is this so damn hard? But in previous years, remember that magic internet money guy? <laughs> Let's go back to his world. Fucking, fucking 10x. Fucking, fucking another 10x. Uh, fucking, fuck. Yeah, another 10x. <laughs> What happened to that market? <laughs> I remember, do you guys remember Farmer Dave? I wonder if any of you in the hangout here even remember Farmer Dave. Farmer Dave, man, that guy took so much money out of DeFi. Holy crap. I think he actually started his uh, rant off as Farmer Dave, but ended it as Astronaut Dave. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Which is so funny. <laughs> I mean, the guy made ridiculous amounts of money. So that's easy mode. We're we're not in easy mode right now, folks. I'm sorry. But if you've got the trading bug and you're like, well, Brian, I need to do something. I need to work on my trading. I need to get better. I need to make money from trading. Well, you know, like I said, you can always ponder the uh, the lower time frame day in swing trading. And this was a really, really good example of um, uh, we had started the weekend. I uh, didn't really like the way that uh, New York boys had sort of finished the show on Friday. It looked a little suspicious. Uh, as for Bitcoin, yeah, it was nice to see uh, we did break these old highs. And that's important, right? So now we, you know, people will look at charts and CWs. And the good part about the Bitcoin chart is um, if we change this to a line chart, the institution people will also see Ws on their charts. Well, it's not the prettiest W, but nonetheless, it is there. So that's that's encouraging. Um, unfortunately, though, Ethereum did not. And actually, I even put a, um, a sort of a warning about this that you know, we rallied up right up against these highs at 1280. And frankly speaking, I thought it was a foregone conclusion. I thought we were just going to blast right through here. Away we go. And literally, we rallied right up against that high and then just slowly faded. And then what's worse is this is actually a fractal top here now. So not only did we just fade when we rallied up against this high, then we just like stopped yesterday. I mean, just like literally stopped. And now, unfortunately, that's actually a sell signal if we go through that candle's low there, 1203.70. And what's really interesting about this is uh, I was basically hunting um, sort of trades. You know, I'm constantly, you know, Monday to Friday, I like trading uh, crude and, uh, and the stock market. Um, yeah es and and crude those are probably those are my bread and butter really i find and really i would even just prefer to stick to crude it's the product i always traded for years and years and years but i do like and we have um you know the uh, tri site it's fascinating how it's constantly evolving a really interesting crew going on in the day trader room um uh, right now and there's one gentleman in particular dave uh, in that room who I uh, have to say it's a real pleasure working with you sir if you're watching this later on so and he trades a lot of ES so in a weird sort of way he's kind of uh, brought me back to ES land um, I still have to get my goddamn act together with regard to um, um, Sierra charts and uh, and uh, amp <laughs> I just I'm so bitter because I have to pay a $50 wire fee to move money down to that amp brokerage and it just pisses me off so I hate spending money <laughs> oh well how can you do anyway and then on the weekends uh yeah I know but you try saying H-E-H to a Canadian bank and they're like uh what was that I don't know H-E-H uh, and really, the bottom line here is that these banks um, in Canada, banks have a very odd sort of societal position. They're quasi, there's not many of them, and they're quasi government agencies, right? In fact, they call them uh, chartered institutions, chartered banks. Arr um so that means that they have an absolutely insufferable attitude and you as the public in fact i remember there was a, a native american uh man and his uh granddaughter who uh went into one of these brank branches in downtown vancouver and uh the Ban branch manager of course you know being completely racist um figured that these two were causing trouble rather than what he wanted to do was open up a bank account for his granddaughter which seems pretty reasonable 
and they actually called the police and had the 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 guy arrested right in front of his granddaughter thrown in cuffs police car off to the police station you go how humiliating so uh that's how incredibly arrogant the canadian banks are just stunningly arrogant um so uh I don't know. How did I get talking about the Canadian bank? Somebody triggered me. What was this? Oh, yeah, Chris. Oh, yeah, my stupid fucking. <laughs> so, you know, really what this really is. No, that's okay. It's uh, perfectly fine. What this really is, is this is the CIBC, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, which is a bank. I used to be a trader for them, and I used to get a whole bunch of free crap from their accounts. So as a result, that's why <laughs> Brian being the cheap ass. And I was a trader for them like 20 years ago, but I still have my account there. They're total assholes. And they said recently that, oh, well, Mr. Beamish, we value your customer. We're going to pick up all the fees and stuff. And they said, I, and I, had, I can't believe I didn't write it down, but they said that they were going to pay for wire fees. So when I went in there the other day and they said that $50 for this wire fee, it's literally just money in their pockets because they're cocksuckers. It's a profit for them. It doesn't cost any money at all. Um, and uh, I'm pissed off because basically they're, you know, and this is what the banks do, right? And this is what screwed a lot of people down in the States uh, in 2008 is it wasn't really that people you know, uh, couldn't afford uh, the houses or something. It's just they literally had the discretionary ability to say you get a loan, but you don't, or your credit worthiness isn't nearly as good as their credit worthiness. So as a result, you have to pay at this higher rate and it's a total arbitrary decision. Uh, and it's, um, it's, it's evil the way that they do this. And actually, you hear it a lot in the sort of testimony of uh, uh, Chappelle in front of uh, U.S. Congress. The politicians are constantly, especially the right wing ones, are constantly saying, now don't you go and start being discriminatory about who you're going to lend money to. And uh, the bankers all go, oh, no, no, we don't discriminate. No, we don't discriminate. Horse hockey. <laughs> I mean, does Klaus discriminate at all? Mm, you tell me. Never better not open up that can of worms. Anyway. Okay, so rant, 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 rant. Uh, this was basically my weekend activity. It was a nice little trade. Felt pretty good about it. So I uh, journaled it up. And uh, what's really cool about this was uh, I. what I'm finding is that the dashboard data is working really really nicely to help us frame our expectations and uh josh uh himself he even put out a um tweet recently that i was like very very impressed with we've asked josh to work in earnest uh to uh, build out a sort of a vetted uh trade setup using uh the uh the breadth data and these numbers are just beautiful, especially if you can go short in a down market uh, and make money from shorting. You look like a trading god. So, I mean, this is this is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, I think it works. It's just really uh, the the problem with this, of course, is that you have to have a brain <laughs> and. When doing this, uh, I mean, I suppose uh, we could, you know, maybe set Josh up and, you know, you can, uh, on some sites, they have like the ghost following thing. But I always found that the more people that you see that are following you, then the more money that's involved, uh, it directly affects uh, your uh, thinking and your behaviors. And you end up, uh, fearing uh, being wrong, and you end up actually talking yourself out of good trades. So in a weird sort of way, I want to almost keep Josh separate. Like we just keep him in a little bottle, and he just keeps spitting this out and just taking his trades and trading his setups. And, you know, if we follow along and if you want to take the trade, great, but he never knows about it. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do that. I don't know, um, but I will say that, Basically, he's doing exactly what I had hoped 
to see happen uh, with this uh, algorithmic approach to trading. Nice, nice job, Josh. He's just absolutely killing it. Perfect. And the good part about it, hopefully, you see, is it's not a ton of trades. I mean, it's made like well, I mean, hell, we can count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. So what is that? It's about one trade a week. It's not really that active to do that kind of performance. Beautiful. Keep in mind, um, you know, Stanley Druckenmiller, you all love him so much. Um, hugs and kisses. You're the best. He uh, boasts about how um, his fund is a compounded annual rate of return of 30%. Okay, that's cool. Um, Peter Lynch, who is a famous uh, mutual fund manager in the 1980s, he's the guy with the white hair. He, uh, he had an interesting quote that uh, you did more than 30% annualized compound rate of return. You beat more than like 90, 95% of all investors ever. That's a pretty darn big number. So are we going to be happy with 135% return? Uh, I think we'll take it. <laughs> uh, so you just keep on shining on josh and really frankly speaking if he lost this one for the remainder of the year and finished at plus 35 percent, i would be perfectly happy with that and i'd say dude you're ready to take on the world the issue here though is what is his setup and can he continue to follow the setup as you know, billion billionaire hedge fund guys come in and uh, start saying, "Hey, I, you know, I'll throw ten million bucks at this guy. Let's uh, let's see if he's got uh, the, the kahunas." So uh, I have to say, I'm overly impressed with Josh. He's on an incredible track. All of you could do this. This is kind of half the reason why we built TRI was to create these automated trading programs. Ironically enough, the school was to do nothing more than actually finance the construction of these tools. Um, and um, it's great to see. Really, really nice to see. And of course, the key to this, like I said, is you can't just be like a doofus. What you have to do is you have to um, put things into context. And so, you know, this particular trading plan, if I'm not mistaken, and of course, Josh, I think he's going to do a tutorial for us relatively near term. Um, is when the the breadth signal actually fires, it's at that point that you go and hunt setups in whatever respective direction the signal fires. And really, that's exactly what this comment was here today that, that I just did. And this is the way that you use these tools, is that this is just yet another reason. Right. And how many reasons are you supposed to have to justify acting in the marketplace? So that's the point of this is that these are incredibly powerful reasons now. Oh, my goodness. Sexy sex. The way I like this was, uh, you know, I had sort of like I had said in, you know, this image, I made it so big that like literally, um, oh, let's see what happens, I think. Yeah, there we go. You can just, you should be able to uh, see and understand everything that I uh, posted in this image if you just zoom in. So the point being that, you know, our histogram, the number one rule about the histogram is if you see breadth above 75, 80%, you know, RSI, typical overbought, oversold. If you see that breadth in the short term and the medium term, both overbought, which is the case here, I don't know whether it's gotten any better now. Where are we? We're at 68.4. So we've already started to come out of overbought in the short term with that weakness in price that we just saw. But notice the medium term, we're still at 84. That's still technically overbought. That's bothersome. But that means to me is that in the short term, we need to see a bit more downside pressure to start producing some medium term sell signals uh from various different names that are in this crypto top 30 to get this out of there uh, that's a little bothersome anyway so the point of the matter here is that's what this image is right and that's what i said be careful crypto kids uh this is a big warning sign 
Uh, and really, I, I fully expect, now whether it be, you know, if anything, some people have said, Brian, you better patent this because there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to come along and copy this like literally next week. I don't know how to do that. And of course, uh, if anybody watching this video has some suggestions, throw them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to uh, follow up those suggestions. Looking at it from a slightly different perspective, this is the uh, bullish percentage index of the histogram. Uh, whoops, uh, what did I do here? Yeah, there we go. Uh, and that's what uh, this image is here. You can see we actually flashed a short-term um, sell signal there on the uh, crypto top 30 with the bread still pointing up on medium term. And this is kind of like a weak signal. So if anything, this makes sense. I don't think you're going to see a crash just per se right now. But it's interesting. You can see the entire crypto universe, eh, it's still sort of, you know, malaise working its way lower. But both the medium terms are still pointed up, which just means that this, this market's weak. It's just it got too overbought. You know, this thing can only go to 100. And you start getting up into the 80, 90 area. And we you got to cool your jets. It's just that simple. And so in that kind of backdrop, what I just simply did was I said, uh, you know, I put the, the warning out to the public, you know, you, know, you better be careful. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a short, but it definitely means if you're bullish, just cool your jets. Um, somebody even replied back, well, you know, isn't that a good sign if everything's pointing up? Not if, if everything is up on both medium and short term, because just think of it this way. There's, in a weird sort of way, you can only stretch the rubber band so far, right? And if you really stretch it out, like really, really far, you know, somebody look at you and go, wow, that rubber band sure is stretchy. And you're right. I mean, it's super stretchy. Look how far I stretched it. But does that mean I can stretch it further? Maybe not. So this is a, it's such a fantastic application of these tools that we bought or bought, built. <laughs> I'd like you to buy them, but actually not buy. In fact, I would expect some big fund or something's going to come along five years from now after we've made a fortune with this and probably offer us an obscene amount of money uh, for this. Or like I said, they're probably just going to copy it. It all depends on if we can patent it fast enough. But in essence, um, this, this is an invaluable tool, absolutely invaluable. Um, and like I said, uh, Josh is already working away on trading systems that are, you know, he'll publish. And maybe we even just, you know, ride his coattails on the trade setup uh, that he uses specifically with the algo signals. But I think we got a pretty good warning sign. Then what I did was I went down and I looked and I, I looked at Ethereum 2 and it really bothered me what I saw. Because as I said there a moment ago, of course you can't really see it too well here, but that high was 1280. And if this really was a bull, why did we not go and take that out? And then also, too, what concerned me was this closing eye was like 1241 or so. And this closing eye was only like 1230 or something or 1220. In fact, we can probably go look at the chart right now. Uh, where is that? Yeah. So this close was uh, 1241. This close was 12.37. That's not good. So we had both candle uh, wicks uh, lower highs and actual clothesline lower highs. Also, too, uh, you level oneers, of course. You've been uh, doing this right now. Um, I think was was this week's uh, lecture on candlesticks? I think it was. Uh, an easy way for you to sort of see these tops. Uh, you're going to have to sort of try and get used to the world, the way of looking at the world this way. Uh, if you type in here, uh, Williams uh, Fractals, you can see this little uh, diamond tool will tell you when a fractal forms. This, The settings I have set are for uh, three bar fractals. Uh, so you can see how uh, we spat up a three-bar fractal there, and uh-oh, 
And really all I want you thinking about there is what does a maple leaf look like? Because keep in mind, maple leaves are very good and it's a very typical pattern that you see in nature. Uh, it shouldn't surprise us, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and all of them make one, two, three. And this is the way the universe sort of works. Um, I think also too, we were the level one are supposed to move watching uh, Mandelbrot uh, videos this week. Anybody here who is in, is in the level one program? What were you guys doing this week? Anyone? I'm going to take a bite of muffin while I wait for somebody to answer. No? No way? Wow. Did I allow everybody to sleep? Is this thing still on? Got 40, 50 people here watching. Is anybody? Yes. All right. There we go. Finally, somebody said something. <laughs> that's good. All right. Oh, man. Well, that's a wicked delay maybe on YouTube. Eh? I guess that's how delayed it is. Big Brother wants to make sure that they can cut me off if I happen to say something that reveals too much of a secret. <laughs> Did I mention I'm not human? Whoops. <laughs> All right. Anyway, back to our story. So if you want to find um, these pivot points, this uh, Williams Fractal tool works uh, really, really well. So... I think we got a bit of a cell signal there. And actually, it's a bit of a doji bar. So if you're thinking rally up against these highs and then, uh-oh, some sort of failure here. I thought it was interesting when I drilled down to a lower time frame chart. Um, I personally, my trading plan works best um, if I uh, hunt for trade setups location-wise off of the four hour chart. But I don't really like exactly four hours. What I want, actually along the same lines as the maple leaf. Uh, did I put that window away? Oh, yes, I did. Um, if you, just like I said there a moment ago, uh, if you can think of the fact that this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all makes one, two, three, fractal. Then if you can think in this sort of, uh, I don't know if the term is correct, but geometric progression. So what, is it geometric? I don't know whether it is or not. But think three and then three times three is nine. And then three nines is 27. And it's interesting, uh, actually, speaking of, uh, somebody says, thanks, Graham. Speaking of Graham, he was the one who sort of uh, recent, I guess maybe about a year or so ago, was like, oh, well, I trade off of nine-minute charts. And I was like, you know, that makes a lot of sense, right? If you sort of think about that sort of sequence. And also, too, what I really like is I like to see charts that nobody else has seen. Uh, or, you know, maybe Tesla fans. <laughs> Uh, hey, well, that's a sweetheart. Look at that. Janta Rai. Have I butchered your name? Sorry, Janta. <laughs> if I have. It says, please hit the like button and share. He is real content provider. Yeah, well, that's cool. Thank you, Janta. I appreciate that. It looks like a few people have hit the like button. Actually, uh, Chris is going to try and do uh, super chats. That was uh, another suggestion from our buddy Eddie. Anyway, so I, uh, you know, if it's Monday to Friday, what I really like is to uh, pull up the four hour chart. Uh, this happens to be, and this is kind of interesting, right? So three to nine to 27. 27 is as close to our 30 minute charts. Then we go uh, three times 27 is 81. That's a weird time frame. But if you think about it, 
81 is like an hour and 21 minutes. So that's like, uh, uh, if you break that into 20 minute blocks, that's like five 20 minute blocks. Anyway, then the next sequence up from that is 243. So that's why I like that funny number. Anyway. Uh, also, too, oh man, I'm so impressed with these. I've uh, been using low to high trend lines recently. Man, they are just giving some killer levels. So look at the application of this simple concept. This pivot low against this pivot high. Just a cute little pivot. Um, and look at what it produced here. Holy for holies. Frankly speaking, I you know I think I'd said earlier when I saw this thing blasting off here, I was like, "We're going through this, man! It's bull! Let's go!" You know, a LFG, all that kind of thing. And I was shocked when I woke up the next day and I saw that we had rolled over here and we could not break out through this high. That really surprised me. But anyway, that's that higher time frame uh, sort of uh, image that I showed you. And what's scary about this, right? is if we do actually go an inside bar fail here, this is all open air. You can see where the trend line is. Boom, boom. Right? And oh, Bill, what a surprise. All this is going to be, and of course, they're going to label it, oh, the price market's crashing. It's the end of the world. Ah. But really, all this is going to be is a reload zone. Da -na 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 -na. You know, public sees, oh, my God, Ethereum's down 10% on the day. And really, all it is is just pulling back right into this uh, previous support area. And really, my rule, for whatever it's worth, take it for whatever it's worth, and it's not worth much. But my rule is I'm not really allowed to think that this bottom has actually been broken and we're actually heading lower in seriousness until I actually see market structure, full letter of the alphabet underneath this trend line. I saw somebody recently, and I've fallen into this trap before, my friends. So I'm not gonna say, you know, I'm not I'm certainly not gonna name names, but I did see somebody recently say, this is a valid M below the trend line. And I, for whatever it was worth, it was an inverted M, the other M, like this. And to me, no, that is not a valid setup. And I've often seen that what this really turns into is an inverted head and shoulders down the road, and you're trapped. You go short here, you know, maybe you get even a shitty fill, and you're short here. It works in your favor for like a day or two, and then blah, pukes out right in your face. So I do not like this. This uh, that is not a valid LJ setup to me, everybody. So you know, uh, I don't know whether the person who uh, put that tweet out there the other day uh, is watching or not, but that's a message to him. And I don't even know if he'll uh, even hear the message. But who knows? Anyway, so the point that I would say here is this W has not been confirmed yet. That was a little suspicious, a little bothersome. Uh, inside bar failure. So I think we're heading down here. So seeing all this, and then, of course, like I showed you a moment ago, off the four hour, it was incredible. I couldn't believe this. So our low to high pivot trend line rallied into it. What do you think the odds are in the lower time frame? We started making some divergences up here. Let's go look at a 27-minute chart, see what we got, Billy Bob. Oh, there's Billy Bob on his uh, bear divergence, uh, just tooting away. Who, who, who? Who, who. There it goes. That's a Billy Bob guy. He's one hell of a bear divergence player. He is that he is, my Joe. Look at that, man. Absolutely textbook. What do you think? Is that a good sound bite there, Chris? <laughs> you think we can get something out of that? Who, 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 who. <laughs> anyway, I'm just having fun. Actually, this is a really good volume impetus signal. Uh, you level oneers, I guess. Uh, I don't know whether you guys have gotten into indicators yet. Um, but wow, what a great uh, analogy of volume impetus. So you can see how volume is just falling right off a cliff here. And sure enough, boom, down she goes. 
See the bill bullet did come back here a little bit. Rah, rah, I'm a bull, I'm a bull. Couldn't break out through that high though. What is that high? 22, eight, 21, nine. Yeah. So uh, that started to set up all this topping action up here. So we'll move through that low there, which came in very quickly was your signal that the bulls had fallen asleep. And sure enough, actually that was just about exactly the level that I was shorting off of. So anyway, um, Back to our higher time frame analysis. Brian's in that job. All right. Um, so I, I mean, I was impressed when I saw this, and this is this. You know, the only place I saw this was um, when I was journaling. And that's the most important thing about all this darn journaling, folks, is that, you know, like I have a very strict cadence, right? And I, I told you earlier, you know, based on our tweet here, that uh, I had this sort of this notion that the market was overbought, that actually Ethereum had not broken out. And, you know, this was the actual tweet that I put out warning people. You know, be careful here. This market has not broken out, and there's a good, easy 5%, 10% drop here. No problem. That, of course, is going to break a bunch of kids' hearts, right? And they're all going to get caught, margin called. Ah, that's the end of the world. So, of course, when I see this, I'm thinking, okay, well, how am I going to frame this? Well, and then, the, you know, clearly I've got uh, lots of indicator uh indication indicator indications <laughs> uh that hey something's up so joe down to my four hour chart going through the process and like i said i did the analysis of this four hour chart and i gotta say man uh i was just stunned when i saw this this is the actual chart uh wherever the hell it is uh there we are that four hour chart and look how pretty this set up here right four hour fractal top against previous highs Low to high trend line was the top. I know, oh, gee whiz, there's a nice big fog and bomb there. And uh, as we said, if you drill down to the 27 minute chart, probably nine minute chart too, you got uh, Billy Bob and the divergences there going crazy. And then lo and behold, there's a four hour chart, right? Bang, bang, bang. There's our little fractal tool. Remember, I just showed you off the lower time frame how you can use that. I don't say it, kick, you know, the, the universe is a fractal. So check this out. Hey, Williams, fractal. I, you could have taken this trade. I mean, it's uh, would have been a little bit bigger of a trade. Uh, but there it is. Right? There is that fractal signal. Boom, boom, boom. Eight and nines on Tom DeMarc. Julian gets all excited for his Tom DeMarc signals. There's a fractal. You got your low to high trend line. Bang, bang. Bang, you've got a fog and bomb up here saying maybe cool your jets. Like I said, if you look at all your indicators, they're in divergence. TRI's uh, breadth indicator is rolling over. The crypto histogram is overbought on board short and medium term. Does it make sense why this did what it did now? <laughs> Do you think we got enough reasons there to justify hunting shorts? Yeah, I tell you, man, this this was textbook. This was absolutely textbook. And if you come to TRI, that's what I that's my goal to try and teach you. Uh, is uh, that that was actually an incredibly textbook setup there. Now, just because it was incredibly textbook, that doesn't mean you're going to take every trade. And actually, what I often like to do, because like I said, I was thinking, oh my god, this thing's going to blast off to the top. So my opinion was clearly wrong. But what I like to do is I like to let the market sort of confirm that indeed it's failed. And we do that through the concept of market structure. Or, as all you laymen like to say, uh, Billy Bob and his big fat M mother somethers. <laughs> no, the big M. Right. And of course, we also had this M here. So lots of bearish structure saying, hey, you know what? I'm not really that much of a bull. So, you know, take it for whatever it's worth. Where you come at this trade? Like I said, I had actually pointed out here that, wow, what a fractal signal. But I missed that trade. Yeah, that's the way it goes. And then sort of through Saturday, I was kind of like, okay, how's this going to set up? And then, of course, boom, we broke through these lows. 
huge market structure signal for me. So at this point, I've got a big fat M staring me in the face. If I could get short off of that double top fail level somewhere in here, nice little consolidation fail, that's my wheelhouse, right? And that is a trend continuation trade. And interestingly enough, uh, you know, we have Colin on the site. And actually, somebody had reached out. Colin, if you're watching later on, site members would like for you to come on to Daily Brief and tell us a little bit about what you're seeing in the market these days. Along with Baby, maybe you can have like a Baby soundtrack or something in the background. That would be kind of fun. Anyway, um, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, we have a guy on the site who really liked this uh, concept. Uh, Thirty-eight point twos, I call it the uh, the first stop target, fifty percent rule. That's Mr. Gann, of course. He liked to call this whole area Collins uh, Pump Chaser Zone, where I'm not going to chase this face rippy market. I'm just going to wait for it to settle back down into here, and then if it does put in buy signals, then great, I'll go long through here. Uh, I wasn't necessarily going to use that as a trade setup, trade location. I mean, it technically could. We're back at a trend line trade, Collins pump chaser zone. If I got like a whole bunch of bullish stuff down below, maybe I could think about it. But what I was thinking about is, okay, I think the market is going to dump into this area. So how can I take advantage? So, you know, off of lower time frames, uh, drilling down now, getting on your sort of day trader hat. There's the dump. There's the double top fail level that we made reference to. That's the level I would ideally like to get short off of. Uh, I did just a simple bot setup here, A, a B, C, D. So level oneers, this is a pretty good working example of that bot setup kind of concept. The only difference with this one is that I strapped on the trade a little bit ahead of the uh bot entry level so it actually gave me a little bit more flexibility what was really interesting about this and what i often see happens is i mean you can see there is the bot level i mean one low two lows three or uh, uh, shorting so one high to risk against two highs to risk against three highs to risk against four highs to risk against kind of one directional movement here so we probably should have been expected some sort of check but remember i had said earlier my rule about trend lines so i can't really take uh this trade here but i see the break and i definitely want to think short i've got the bot levels all ready to go so now it's just really a question of how am i going to sneak in and what is interesting about this is the market was working its way up. I had no idea where the hell this damn thing was going to fail. All I knew was I was, uh, you know, I had enough highs. And in you know, level oneers, you just did your FIB uh, tutorial. So I thought this was a really, really good example. I wanted to see, of course, confirmed bear divs to justify uh, me hunting shorts. So there is the divs. Willie's nice and stupid. So we've got all the short criteria all there. Um. And you guys just learned about institutional fingerprints. So I might argue that the market was working its way up, but then you notice it put in this doji uh, bar here. And, uh, you know, in our education course, we like to call the bar that made the high of whatever the push is plus the preceding bar. This is sort of the area that institutions officially sort of put the top in the market. Um, M, following that event, now you can clearly see that they also have market structure defending that top. Uh, market comes down to the trend line, probably short-term scalpers taking some profits. Rebounded back to that original M top failure. Probably guys who missed this dump wanted to get in. Is what we call a Wyckoff check off the lower time frames. They uh, shorted there for this move. So coming in on the short side here, well, maybe a, a bit late. But nonetheless, did like what I'm seeing. So what I did was I just simply said, and I sort of started paying serious attention in this area here when uh, I started to see a market moving up, but momentum starting to wane. And, um, you know, really I wanted to join the short trade. It was just a question of where do I get in? And so I made the grand decision that, um, I mean, I suppose it'd be interesting to see what this level ultimately became. 
but uh, there is your top and the reload short zone. Uh, well, so you can see uh, we hit Mountain Man, and this is where I was really starting to pay attention because I was starting to get Divi kind of action here. Wanted to get short, and so it's just like, okay, if this thing three bar fractals, I'll take that. And this is what I like to call front running uh, the bot. There's the bot short entry level. Um, I let the market come into that level. Dead cap bounce came up underneath this trend line. And I was like, if I get any signs of failure, I want to join this short trade. Fascinating. And you can see there is my trade right there. So uh, I actually had an order on stop, this three bar fractal order on stop and boom, I was filled. But look at look at what happened here, right? This is a perfect analogy of a trader's life. I mean, you could have very easily said, well, Brian, I thought you were a really big fan of uh, 78.6s. Why didn't you put your order at the 78.6? I could have. Could have, would have, should have. I'm not going to say uh, I'm, uh, I mean, I, I haven't got a crystal ball. Uh, what I wanted to do was get in on this short that I thought was already working, and I had lots of highs to sort of defend my trade. Could I had worked an order up in this area? Yeah. Hell, on this site recently, we've been talking, and I see this a lot in crypto, is, uh, you know, this looks like almost like a manufactured top. And and then they kind of did it again. Here to here to here and then fail. Could they have just been doing nothing more than just setting up a liquidity pool where a whole bunch of guys stop loss orders right here? And that's basically them getting short right off the trend line tag again from the other side. Yeah, I mean, that that's like super boss. I'm the most fucking killer trader in the world trader. I'm a little bit slower. And uh, as I said, I... I would personally prefer, uh, like I said, I, I had my uh, reloads on the Mountain Man tag lev, fail, uh, hit, and then I was just going to hit any kind of sort of structural failure on the other side of this trend line here. And so I went with the fractal. Uh, and you can see, like, I, I, was, I was committed to risking against the uh, highs because, in essence, that is the bot setup. You... Um, you enter in off of the 25 and you risk against the highs. I think you could make the argument that, A, uh, I could have timed the trade a little bit better by just having the order working in the reload zone up at that 78.6 and gotten filled on these insane wicks up here. Total boss, trader, boss, trade. suppose you could also make the argument, maybe, Brian, you should have waited for this three-bar fractal over here signal to fire. Eh, hindsight's 2020. Then I suppose you could also say, well, Brian, isn't this the big M that actually is the 25 entry level right there? Yeah. So yeah, there's always things you can learn. Uh, what I will say, I was in the heat of the moment and I liked what I saw. So I pulled the trigger and just live with the results. <laughs> I had my stop up here. And if I was going to get blown out, I was going to get blown out and I didn't get blown out. So that was kind of cool. Um, market worked its way lower. Now, I was a little bit fortunate here. Because I was able to work uh, my entry here, when the move stopped to scratch level was hit and we had the rally back to the 25 level, I was able to just sit there with my stop just here and not worry about getting stopped out. So if I had had my stop at the 25 level, I would have been blown out here. Interesting anecdote. And one of the main reasons why I really like, quote unquote, front running the trade, where I want to try and anticipate that break. Based off what I saw for the fact that this trend line was looking like it was failing, all the bare divs, the higher time frame sort of waffly. This, you know, I think actually confirmed the, uh, the, uh, the doji bar, inside bar failure uh action and then i think this one also did too i kind of wanted to stay in the trade as best as i could and actually hindsight 2020 i guess that was right so uh woke up this morning and actually my stop was still sitting at scratch to i uh, woke up to this i was pleased to see and if anything the biggest debate i had was was i going to panic 
on these stabs down here, you can see they were just above the bot level. And was I going to panic? And I was like, well, I'm not really in a big hurry. If we start, you know, doing like higher highs and higher lows, then maybe I'll get out. But you can see I got filled nicely there. Also, too, as sort of a testament that this probably was a good place to hop off on shorts was the fact that we had this trend line, which I pointed out to you. Actually, I think uh, you have to see it off of this higher time frame chart. So boom, boom. Well, respected there. You can see they lost it, but then regained it. Respected again there. So the odds are there was probably going to be a bit of a fight. And of course, that's right in Colin's zone. And it's also a move against that sort of recent pivot low. So that is probably an area where you should be thinking about maybe hopping off. In fact, I would even say that probably now I should be thinking about things like 38.2 is going back up. And probably for the next little while, yeah, notice how this downtrend line rally back is going to do nothing more than just smack right into that 38.2. So now, ironically enough, what I would expect is something like this. Uh, and in the library, uh, we have, which one? Actually, you know what? I didn't even check to see whether there's any questions for today. Man, I'm just blabbing away, eh? <laughs> oh, did you guys enjoy that uh, that little walk through my uh, my fun little day trading <laughs> ETH? No, because I mean, really, I, I want all of you guys to learn from this. So anyway, uh, point is, as you can see off of this chart, I, I was very pleased with the way that this all uh, progressed and uh, process goals. I had my open order to buy the position back at that level. You can see I was filled. So on the balance, it was a very um, respectful day. And the point here is, ironically enough, and I tell you guys this all the time, I don't know whether, I mean, I believe it myself. I don't know whether any of you believe it or not, but I don't even really give a shit about the money. What I really want is I want to be the demonstrator of best practices. You know, I've been at this business so long. And that was, you know, half of the reason why I do these trades is I want to show you, you know, kind of what I even said here, like, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because for a huge port of a uh, huge portion of my professional career, most people in the market says you cannot do this. Like, you talk to almost all university professors, and of course, university professors make the worst investors. Talk to most doctors, you know, especially people that are like programmed by the system where they have like sort of a set set of rules and they have to follow those rules. And if you break those rules, you're toast. Because ironically enough, when it comes to human psychology, if it's one thing I've learned, about human psychology is there are no rules. <laughs> there are no boundaries. Nothing is too nasty for these human beings. They are evil little motherfucking <laughs> creatures. And I've often joked that this species, oh my goodness, face palm. <laughs> Why did I get uh, sent back in this species? <laughs> I don't understand. So the whole reason why I do this is just to show you that you can do this. It is doable. It really is. There's not a lot of people in society that can do this. But if you can control yourself, if you can control your emotions, and like I, what I really want to demonstrate is, you know, what you have to do is you have to make a commitment to be journaling every single day. And every single ounce of your behavior is under the microscope. And you must be. And not only do I want to do this for myself and make money from trading for myself and all that kind of fun stuff, but I've also, of course, and, you know, my parents used to always say this. They used to always say, Brian, you know, my mother would call me Charlie, though, but that's a different conversation for another day. Um, they'd say, Brian, you know, you, you, you like to make life as hard as possible on yourself. Why? Why do you do that? <laughs> so, 
I mean, I suppose I could just sit and trade my own money, and I don't even need to do any of these social media things. I don't need to interact. I mean, I'll just go back to fucking top step and just be a a mindless drone um, uh, prop trader, you know, just sitting there in your cubicles and buy, sell, buy, or sell. <laughs> no, Brian's got to go and try and change the world. No, Brian's got to make a positive difference for the world. No. <laughs> Three hours later, did any of you guys get any value out of any of that? <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, and actually, uh, Phil said Phil said picked up on that. Hey, eh? interesting. Actually, Phil, uh, it was great to see you. I think you're uh, the Phil in the uh, in the Portugal meetup room, eh? So uh, yeah, and it's actually cool. I put this tweet out uh, that we're gonna have this uh, meetup here pretty soon, and all of a sudden, I'm getting people I haven't talked to in years all pouring out of the woodwork. What? What? What are you doing? What? What's going on over there? So that's great to see. So everybody's got two months' notice uh, that, uh, that that we are having this meetup. So and yeah, if you want it, place to crash. You know, like Raf, for instance. If you're watching this later on, uh, you better uh, all the houses, man. They're they're getting booked up a toot sweet. In fact, we probably need a third house in Nazare. Anyway. Okay, so uh, point here was I uh, actually had a pretty constructive uh, weekend. Um, demonstrator of best practices, account balance uh, moved up, so that's encouraging. Um, and really, I mean, gave you a complete walkthrough of the whole trade, not only in image form, but also with this verbal walkthrough. I don't know whether we want to... Um, Piece together, Chris, this as uh, as our sort of public offering. I don't know if you can do that in five, 10 minutes, but this was the big message of the weekend, right? And uh, if anything, like message-wise, what I really want you all to get from this rant here is uh, the journal tool comes with all site subscriptions at TRI. And ironically enough, I think this is the most valuable thing that we have built at TRI. All students get one on their dashboards day one of our education program. And frankly speaking, I'd actually like to even in level three, see you working with this tool. And really you level oneers, I think this is a perfect place where I would like to actually validate that you have actually gotten value out of the program. I wanna see this journal the day you're graduating. I want Graham to go through every single student's journal and just confirm that they are using the tool correctly. And that's just simply, uh, I wanna see, and you know, everything's really laid out nice and clean here. It's not rocket science. Um, what did I observe? You know, basically I observed that the market finished Friday, not so good. Uh, and I even, you know, uh, on things like TRI's dashboard, uh, you know, bright indicators and stuff, not flashing very positive signs. Um, bearish bot setup worked nicely, put it on front run, the trend line fail and first fractal following trend line break. Everything that I just told you about, right. Um, uh, where is... Hope I got the charts right. Anyway, these are lower time frames. There is that trend line break I was talking to you about. There is the uh, bear divs I was talking about. And just simply walk through the trade. There is the actual level that I was talking to you guys about a moment ago. Here, and then, you know, to actually, it's weird when you do trading view, they don't actually show the trade numbers. So I actually take screenshots of them to actually see the actual trade levels there noted on the chart. I'm not quite sure how to fix that. So point of the matter here is everybody should be able to do this. Everybody. Nobody should have any excuses on the site why you can't do this. And really the point here is I've also included this, and it was kind of ambiguous before because I was doing it off of Google Sheets, which is a total pain in the butt. So now that we have it on this site, I've actually just got it as sort of a trading utility, Brian's Trade Journal. So anybody who's coming on the site and wants to, there it is for you. You can follow along day by day by day. 
really nice and simple, straightforward. And you can see, viewable by other members, big old yes there. Now, we did have an issue, and other people have pointed this out. So uh, I've asked Chris to remind me when we have Seward on the call uh, on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever it's going to be his day uh, this coming week that we have to make sure that uh, all of the users, because I don't think I'm actually in this user directory, which is kind of ironic. I'm not quite sure why. Probably because I'm under a name that uh, that, that we're not searching for or something like that. I don't know. Anyway. So I've included this right in the library and make it nice and simple for everybody. Boom, Brian's Trade Journal. Um, okay, so I won't beat on that anymore, but I was just, this is exactly, this is my purpose, is all I have to do is just keep doing this uh, every single day. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is my gift to the world. You want to follow along? You want to come along for the journey? We actually created a transparency pact. Who actually wants to be a professional trader? Actually, I didn't finish reading this stuff, did I? Right? No excuses now. I mean, hell, even the 30-day trial, you can do this if you wanted. This happens to be my journal. Anyone on the site can view it at any time. I believe running a profitable small business trading is not only achievable, but it's also a lot of fun. Right? And that's half the battle here. You want to make this fun, people. Don't drive yourself crazy with this. It's not supposed to be unfun. It's supposed to be fun. I believe journaling is the only way to get better at, at learning to follow the process. And that's what this is all about. This is not, ironically enough, if you follow the process, the money takes care of itself. Forget about the money. Learn to get good at following the process. My plan is to show all TRIs both how to effectively journal, but also, too, how to follow the process. That's the whole point of this exercise. Those who are dead serious about becoming professional traders at TRI have joined our Transparency Pact. And really, at the end of the day, a month from now, if I ask any one of them, uh, can you please show me your journal, and they're not journaling, I have no respect for them. It's like, well, why are you wasting my time? We openly share our journals and have made a commitment to the process, which, if done correctly, will show very clearly in our journaling. And that's the that's the cool part about this, is if you make a commitment to being excellent, then your journal will read beautifully. It will just read like poetry. Yeah, you may lose some money. I mean... How often do we have to be right if every single one of our setup has a minimum of two to one risk reward? How often do we have to be right just to break even? A third of the time, only 33% of the time, just to be a scratch trader. So I want, you know, I mean, it's going to be incredibly debilitating for you. But hell, I want to see you 50% of the time you're journaling, yep, winning trade. And 50% of the time you're journaling, no, oh, God stopped out for a loss. I followed the process. I did what I was supposed to do. My journal is an open book. Anybody can look at it. Anybody can review it. I am the demonstrator of best practices. No big deal. On to the next trade. Can you do that? If you can do that, and keep in mind, like only five, maybe 10%, but probably more like five, if not less, 5% of the whole fucking population, right? How many billions of us are there on this silly planet? And you know what I see is I see most of the humans do exact, you know what most of the humans do? They act like a stand-up comic. You're a stand-up comic, and you deliver your lines, and you make the audience laugh. You are a winner. You uh, stand-up comic. You stand up on stage. You don't deliver your lines well, and you bomb. You are a loser. Uh, the really good comics, man, they make it seem so easy, don't they? But most of us can't do that. We couldn't just stand up on stage and start telling jokes and kill it that's that's a rare gift so and i really i suppose you could argue you know professional sports person same sort of thing 
You know, I remember when I was a kid, man, I used to play so much tennis. It was ridiculous. And really, even of the kids that played tennis all the fucking time, uh, only 1% of them even made it. In fact, actually, I had a doubles partner that went pretty far in the world. But that was his fate, not mine. <laughs> I'm stuck in the community center teaching the kids. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do? All right, so the point here is uh, we, you know, we even have a community of people at TRI that are committed to the transparency pack. I'm very proud of them. Now, let's see whether they actually do what they say they're going to do. The cool part about me being so public and I've publicly made this pact is now if I don't do it, I look like an idiot. And there's no point in any of you coming to TRI. So I got no choice. <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, I, either Brian, yes, you're the demonstrator of best practices, and I'm very proud of uh, knowing you and working with you, or Brian, you suck. <laughs> so let's see what happens. <laughs> The good part about it is Sjord's built all these tools on the site, so really don't have any excuses. All right, so. Are you ready to get serious about your trading? Seriously? Are you? I can't make you do what it takes to be a good. You know, jokes always uh, can lead a horse to water. I can't make it eat peanut butter. Uh, if you know that line, then you uh, definitely are from the last century. I think it was the last century, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. But I can show you the path. And that's really my goal here uh, with these kind of uh, rants is I'm that guy that's been down the road. Uh, I've had some success. I've had some failures. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I used to have like book uh, books. <laughs> I've had many books over the years. Um, uh, I've gotten into this bent about, I guess, about eight years ago uh, with uh, the Rational Investor and the website and stuff. Uh, in eight years, I think we've maintained our reputation in the industry, which I think in itself is a huge credit. There uh, sure are a lot of people through uh, these cycles that they look like geniuses on the way up and then three arrows capitals themselves on the way down. Uh, so really my, um, my gift is that I'm not that greedy. <laughs> Means also too, I'm not a billionaire, but what the fuck. Uh, slow and steady wins a race. Um, and I even said in this tweet, like, I'll sort of give you sort of the higher time frame sort of perspective. And I'll I'll even maybe share publicly with you on Twitter things like breadth indicators and stuff sporadically. You know, there's nothing sort of published. But uh, uh, if you really want my sort of day-to-day -day trade levels and what I'm hunting for in crude and ES and Bitcoin and stuff on a daily basis, and of course, follow my journal. Watch me through the process, all that kind of fun stuff. Be the demonstrator of best practices. Then you have to come on the website. I think that's a fair exchange. Um, okay, so uh, that was my big rant today. I don't know whether that was a sales pitch or not, but um, I hope you can understand a little bit more about what it is I do during bear markets. Because during bull markets, little old lady, you know, Banging out doubles. I mean, it's almost embarrassing what we do on a daily basis. But during bear markets, you got to keep yourself busy. I mean, what are you going to do? I uh, believe it or not, you can actually make a buck or two in bear markets. It's it's difficult, but you can do it. Um, um, okay, so what I wanted to do, and the whole point of today, believe it or not, is to answer questions that you guys might have, but I just keep blabbing away endlessly. So let's pop on over here. I doubt there are any questions because, as I said, like this is the perfect time. And somebody was asking when our next uh, school term starts. It'll be in early September there. So, uh, hey, hey, do. Uh, if you, um, 
if you if you get you like come on do the 30-day trial just sort of get into the groove of what tri is like on a monday to friday basis um if if you're if it's in between school terms and the 30-day trials run up you know really it's not that bad of a proposition i think it's like 20 to 30 bucks a month or something like that for the basic site subscription uh, and then if you put yourself into the school term loop, I think, and if you reached out to Julian, he might even give you a, a discount on that silver membership up until the school term starts. Um, and then while you're in the school program, of course, there are no site sort of fees. I mean, everything's in the school. Uh, the advanced tools, the breadth indicators, the signaling systems, that kind of stuff, that is a separate subscription package unto itself but you don't have to uh, subscribe to that kind of stuff if you don't want to the uh the basic uh uh dashboard um it gives you access to all the videos that we do and by all means if you want to come in and ask uh uh questions uh you know you can see here is uh, i don't know what uh video <laughs> that's interesting usually that loads but i also see the ap uh feed as well and also a tri pma uh feed you can grab that and you can uh, you know see my journal i think actually your journal loads on that not mine so but you can go into the library and uh, as i showed you there earlier you can uh, but it, i've had people in the past say that the library itself is easily worth the price of a subscription but uh you can see uh, we've got uh, tons and tons of trade utilities and stuff um, that I would recommend anybody and everybody make use of. So, um, okay, so let's uh, head on over to these questions. I, like, I don't uh, know if there's even going to be any here today. Let's see what we got. It's today, the 10th of July. Sounds about right. July 10th. Wow. So already a third of this month is over. Okay, how do you protect yourself from getting out of a trade too early? How do I know when is a proper time to pull out? Uh, usually when, sh no, no, okay, I better not make a smart ass comment there. I was in a bond trade on BTC and ended up kicking myself because I left money on the table. I got out because Willie at one point was oversold and MACD was tanking down and volume showed that a bear woke up. The sad part is this only lasted for one to three minute candle. <laughs> okay. Maybe let's move away from the lower time frame candles, okay? <laughs> In level one, are you should you really be trading off of three minute candles? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, it's adorable and that uh, and you're like well brian i gotta get 20 100 trades in here so come on <laughs> hey if you're trading off a one to three minute candles then i better see a hundred trades from you and frankly speaking you know what karen's gonna tell you in the level two program is that whatever anybody asks him about setups he said well you know honestly you're going to know the answer better than I will, how you're going to act if you've done those 20 paper trades. You know, after a while, maybe the fourth or fifth one, you're going to go, you know, using Willie as a stop is not such a good idea on an active bot. But I can't answer that for you. That's only you can answer that. So, you know, this is, if you go to the library, um i think in um in uh where the hell's the setups here we are um yeah i mean i'm i've even i think i even did like a video of uh the bot this is just a really simple uh bot setup uh walking you through step by step by step i will say that this is an hourly chart so a little bit higher time frame than uh then one to three minutes. <laughs> I'd also say too, we have YouTube video uh, sort of walkthrough of that bot. There's here's a bearish bot. Uh, so the same logic, just going the other direction. They, and you know, in an ideal world, whoever asks this question, this is what we want to see: is you enter the trade and bang, instant cha-ching, right? That's that's what everybody wants. Um, 
every once in a while you strap one on and this happens and it's just like man that was the easiest money ever i want every trade to be like that and what ends up happening right is if you hit like a fail level here and you're like okay come on pew 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 and then it turns into a hammer and you're like ah son of a bitch right man but and then okay here we go we're gonna okay this is it pew 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 no no oh, god damn son of a bitch. okay this is gonna be a pew 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 oh no oh this is getting worse oh my god is that a w coming in there maybe i should get the hell out right and then all of a sudden uh, and then pew, 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 pew. i mean you just don't know do you uh that's why actually i often suggest that this is a this is an educational process for you. Some people that I've worked with years and years gone by, <clears throat> they actually don't even like having these rules uh, in this. They're just like, you know what? If this is an A, B, C, D, then this is a, actually, believe it or not, this is actually a buying location down here that they're hunting. The trade gets broken into, I'm going to risk 25%. Because I'm going to enter here. If I'm wrong, I'm going to walk away if it breaks this top here. But if I'm right, I'm going to take profits here. And I only have two orders. I just entered the trade. I've got my stop up here. I've got my profit target here. And that's it. Just going to live with the results. Let's see what happens. And interestingly enough, in your case, I have a funny feeling that's one of the ones that would have fallen into that category. So you as an individual trader, you have to actually come to the point where, what do I like better? Do I like giving myself the permission to do things like move my stop to scratch or move my stop to trailing and then already start locking in profits? Or would it be best and really the only way you're going to know this for certain is you have to do like two columns Column A along one side of your spreadsheet is going to be, uh, I followed the strict bot stop trailing levels, and I used this particular stop method, and these were the results. Then the next column you're going to have beside it, I used this particular stop method while you're employing the stop rules. You know, one might be I'm going to use a moving average to help me. Another might be I'm going to use market structure to help. Another might be ATR, as I used to use in the, the prop crude trading. Uh, point being, there's a number of different ways to work stops. Um, in fact, we don't even really get into the business of giving you discretion to manage stops until level three. I would personally, honestly, I would personally prefer that you just buy the bot entry level, you are going to take profits at the bot target, or you're going to take your loss at, on a break of the floor, and that's it. I do like the idea that if a market moves about half of your anticipated move, that you give yourself permission to move your stop to scratch, because I don't really like to see uh, consistently uh, you in winning trades but then they turn into losing trades and you actually get stopped out at a loss. That psychologically is really debilitating. So maybe in this second column, right? You have the first column, I'm going to use the three high low method or whatever method you choose. And really, you know, it's kind of sketchy in the level one because I really don't even want to give you that permission to manage stops. I would rather have that conversation. We have a module in the level three program, pro stop management, where we go through various different ways to protect your positions. Um, I know that the bot setup itself does out of the box. It does have the move stop to trailing. All I'm going to simply say for your case, I wouldn't rely on indicators. I would just simply use market structure. Now, this is a pretty good example where you would say, okay, well, the market hit move stop to trailing. The market moved up, then it came down, then it moved up, and then it went through that low. So that's market structure. That's an M. So you're telling me, Brian, I should have got out there, and then instantly the damn thing turns around and goes zipping right up to the bot target. 
Talk about frustration. This is where we get into trading as an art form more than it is a science. The people that are like, you know what? I've actually come, I don't like to have the, the move stop to trailing level in my bot setup. I've taken this level completely out. And yes, at 50%, I'm going to move my stop to scratch because I don't want to see a winning trade turn into a losing trade. But I'm either going to take them, the get stopped at scratch, or I'm going to take my big fat profit, either or. So that could definitely be a column, right? And you have on your spreadsheet one column, another column, another column. And you're comparing the results. And what I'd also say, too, and this is where you get into your personal bent on trading, is I think you should have a column also in your spreadsheet that just gives you the opportunity to track how you feel. So, you know, in the situation like here, for example, where... Well, that Beamish guy says I'm going to use market structure. So it hit move stop to trailing. I got an M and I got stopped out here. Journal how you felt. Right. Oh, that makes me so fucking mad because the goddamn market went zipping right up to there. So that's it's it's there. There is never a this is the way you do it and you don't do it any other way answer in trading. It doesn't work that way. Uh, I, I hope that helped answer your question. Is the person who asked this question here? Then also, too, don't really like the idea of uh, you operating off of like three-minute charts. If anything, what I would even say is, you know, what does this bot setup look like? And maybe when you're in the move stop to trailing part, maybe that's where you zoom out. And try and really identify like crisp market structure that you're going to move stops against. I'd also say, too, this is pretty advanced stuff, especially for level one. It's great that you're even at this point where you can have this sort of conversation with yourself. But really, the answer is going to be, I want to see it log 50 of these damn things. And then I want to see you... Um, Especially if you're operating off of this kind of lower time frame, in the time that you're working at TRI, you should easily be able to log a good 50 of these setups. So then the question ultimately becomes, how does this setup work best, best with the way I like to look at the market? Hope that helps. The person who asked the question here. Maybe yes, maybe no. All right. GOL1. Hello, Brian. In an LOL planting flowers perspective, are there any assets than stocks, BCIM, to focus on more than others in this greed cycle for the next X years? <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, VCIM is fun, right? But remember, VCIM is all about investing in venture capital. I mean, you guys are seeing what happens to venture capital. I, you know, you guys all involved in crypto. Wow, are you? Do you guys ever get this in spades? But I would actually say a probably more profitable approach in a growth environment is canceling. So uh, Geo, I would strongly suggest, you know, if you are interested in stocks, then you really get good at hunting CanSlim ideas. Because CanSlim, that that was that that model was actually created by the guy who uh, basically in the 1980 to 2000 greed cycle made all his fortune. VCIM is all about penny stocks. Can Slam is all about like finding the next Home Depot. Do some of the VCIMers, these junior penny stocks, turn into uh, the next Home Depot? Nah. The best I've seen with these VCIMers is the stock will go from like um, 10, 20 cents up to three or four dollars. Then usually what ends up happening is they end up getting bought out. 
Now, don't get me wrong, you know, <clears throat> 30 cents to three dollars, that's a pretty damn good move. Um, but most of the time when the VCIM name does work, uh, some major company just comes along and swallows it up down the road. You you either take a cash payout or uh, you become a shareholder in the bigger company. The can slim stocks, I mean, they do get bought out as well. But usually they have so much earnings momentum uh, that, you know, they, they just keep growing and growing and growing. So, uh, Gio, I would strongly suggest that you get good at hunting can slim ideas. Uh, I take into account your concerns about crypto for this greed cycle since more linked to the fear cycle. I couldn't tell at the live show, but I'm sending good karma waves to Liam. Oh, you're awesome. Thanks, man. Um, well, I mean, the $64,000 question about crypto is, is it, is it actually sort of in its final sort of, uh, morphification? <laughs> and frankly speaking, I don't know what the answer to that is. I mean, is Ethereum similar to Bitcoin? Yeah, similar. Does Ethereum wish to be sort of a store of value kind of story like Bitcoin? I don't think so. So is the smart contract um, and the idea of Ethereum gas, is, uh, is, that a, uh, is that a store of value uh, proposition? I don't think it is. So I don't see the problem here is that, you know, if you are going to think of crypto as a store of value story, then OK, fine. Uh, I believe that uh, the fear cycle store of value preference, eh, you know, it's going to take a backseat. I mean, the problem here is uh, have democratically elected politicians stopped overspending? <laughs> Cole has an interesting answer to that. <laughs> I mean, I answered one honest question. Let's see what people on YouTube actually say. It'd be interesting to see what you over on YouTube said. Are democratically elected politicians and governments balancing budgets? Is there a concern, a desire to balance budgets? Now, of course, all you guys in the hangout, I know what you're going to say. But let's just see what the YouTubers think. Look how long this delay is. Holy moly. See how long it takes for somebody to answer over there. So you wonder why the video is three hours long. It's because uh, I have to wait for so long for you guys to get some feedback from YouTube. Hey, there we go. Somebody's finally saying something. Heck no. Spend it all before you die. Yeah, I know. Terrible, eh? So, and, and the guy fucking running the United States, I think he's already dead. I think literally they just prop him up and they sort of zap him with a whole bunch of electricity before he has to speak. <laughs> and, oh God, he's right. He's, he's like literally reading every single line on the script, including laugh now, repeat sentence now. <laughs> it's almost, it's... It's embarrassing. He's like making the United States of America look like a laughing stock, at least with fucking orange to pay. At least he wasn't that blatant. I remember he did fuck up a couple times and he slurred words and shit like that. <laughs> but man, this guy, Sleepy Joe. Oh boy, what a train wreck. All right. So um democratically elected governments are not gonna stop overspending. So does that mean that the value of the currency is stabilized now? Is that it for money printing? Are we all done? Will that ever happen again? My hunch is it's uh, yeah, we're, we're probably going to be the theme of the 21st century until we get to the point where the whole fucking thing collapses. Uh, which, you know, interestingly enough, they're on sort of a pseudo money tightening for the bent right now. 
we'll see how long that lasts. You know, Benner cycle, I guess we had to expect this 22, 23. But my hunch is by the time they're done, that the Fed's balance sheet is still going to have a ridiculous amount of uh, bad bonds on it. That will probably take a whole generation to actually unwind. But M2 money supply, I would be shocked if we actually saw it actually material materially fall at all here. And the governments just keep overspending. We, this will not stop until we get to a crisis where interest rates are probably like double digits. Inflation numbers for the public is just they're getting absolutely destroyed. And, um, you know, senior citizens can't live on their pensions. They're eating cat food, uh, which if they, they might already be doing that now. Uh, I don't see any change to that. So that means <laughs> that probably once we get through this sort of money tightening cycle and we get back to, oh, my God, we need growth. We need growth. We need growth. What do you think Bitcoin's price is going to do? Up, up, and away. Now, what happens, I mean, the interesting thing about kids and venture cap is uh, they have relatively short-term memories. You know, I remember in the aftermath of BitConnect, you know, and Seagal and Mayweather and all that, everybody thought that this space was toast. Give them a year or two. Public forgets. Enter new celebrities that, oh, no, these guys will never fuck us over. Magic internet money guy. Fucking, fucking. Uh, Do Kwan. <laughs> that guy. Fuck, what a joke. So, you know, here we go again. <laughs> How long is it going to take? Uh, my hunch is that this soap opera, this cleanup, this washout, it has to go on until about the middle of next year. Then once that's done, then we'll go back to, ah, crypto sucks, crypto will never do anything, and then we start the whole damn cycle all over again. Uh, yeah, I heard uh, Sri Lanka is uh, basically dissolving into anarchy. Eh? The government comes out and says, sorry, we're bankrupt. <laughs> and we're done. Yeah, well. So, so Geo. I want you, and if you want to reach out to me, let's do it. I would like to see more can slimmers uh, on the site. It's a very good model. It uh, gives you uh, growth stories that these stocks can go and go and go and go. And I would actually say that's probably the smart place to play the stock market uh, for this coming cycle. Uh, <clears throat> crypto, uh, you know, on balance, I think, you know, if you just concentrate on buying, when people are talking about things like uh, cryptocurrencies are trading at or below the cost of production, value, imagine that, eh? <laughs> and uh, there is a open threat of 51% attack on the networks. If you step up, and my hunch is, especially uh, specifically with regard to Bitcoin, <laughs> If you start paying attention and then you start seeing big fat W's coming in on the price charts and then you start hearing that we're getting approaching happening, well, you can start loading up and my hunch is 5, 10x moves really wouldn't surprise me. So, and then of course all the various shit coins. Do you think that Mr. Fucking Fucking, do you think that's the last one we're ever going to hear out of the crypto community? You think that's the last, or Mr. Do Kwan, do you think that's the last Korean uh, in the crypto space? Mind you, I don't think being Korean makes any difference. But do you think that's the last of him? It's Yeah, I mean, these guys, they come out of the woodwork. I guarantee you there's going to be a guy who's not, is going to be like, uh, um, you know, Danny 2.0. You know it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's capitalism. It's the way we humans are programmed, so uh m m m says mount gox attorney is going to refund 150,000 btc in the next days Ooh, there you go 
So uh, Gox is finally going to get resolved, eh? Jesus, it's been forever. I know there was one guy that was on the website. He uh, he got screwed over in Gox, and every time he mentioned Gox, it was almost like it was uh, it was like uh, you shocked him with electricity or something. <laughs> Quit saying that damn word. <laughs> I see Mark Capellas or uh, Roly Poly, we used to call him. Mind you, he's all grown up and he's all thin now. So how funny. All right, uh, so I hope that helps you there, Geo. And if you want to, we, uh, you know, what I would prefer to see you, Geo, is, uh, like I said, get good at the can slim screen for stocks. And then if you're interested in investing in crypto, I think crypto will do fine in the next growth cycle. I don't see any reason why it won't. It's just you have to try and hunt value. What the hell is value? And when it comes to these smart contracts and tokens and stuff, it's even trickier. So, uh, you know, weekly W's on volume breakouts, all that kind of fun stuff. And really, probably the easiest way for you to think about the market. Like, I'm not saying that, that VCIM stocks are doing well right now because they're sucking horse cocks just like the rest of the venture cap market. There's not a hell of a lot moving up right now. So don't think it's like, uh, you know, and also, too, don't get wrapped into the idea that 10, 15 years from now, when we're at the top of the greed cycle, that the world is even going to remotely look like the way the world looks like right now. Because I guarantee you, it won't. The top of the dot-com boom, nobody was thinking about fucking war in the Middle East. Nobody. In fact, Jimmy Rogers in the late 1990s, I remember, he had this little convertible uh, Mercedes Benz. And he had this little bimbo uh, blonde, you know, bleach blonde wife. And he drove around the world. You going to try and drive through Russia nowadays? How's that going to go? <laughs> and you're an American? Uh, I don't think so. So my hunch is the world itself will look very, very different by the time we actually get into the next growth cycle in earnest. And right now, we got to go through the shit. And right now, you're kind of looking at the world, you know, Benner cycle, six different celestial events, once in a million year kind of event. Uh, and I'm not even saying that that shit's over. I mean, I, from what I understand, Klaus has got more fucking shit up his ass coming at us next year. So try not to get too wrapped up in the pessimism of the short term over the next, say, six to 12 months. And try and remember that by the time we actually get to the next uh, greed cycle peak, you know, the world is and the market and everything that's actually hot, the names that we're going to be interested in, you know, making millions from, you know, last cycle, nobody knew what the fuck a Luna was. Nobody knew what a magic internet money was. So same thing next cycle. Whatever's hot, we have no idea what it is today. So... Ironically enough, to actually think that Bitcoin is going to continue being hot, that might actually be a little naive. But uh, as a good store of value, and will it rally uh, when it gets down below cost of production into happening events? I think so. Well, that's what it was designed to do. And I don't see any of these uh, politicians sort of getting religion about balancing budgets. So the value of our currencies are just going to continue to fall, 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 fall. So, all right. Well, hopefully that gives you some stuff to think about. And thank you very much for the nice thoughts about Liam. Okay. For level one students, do you recommend paper trading and then trading small amounts with just one setup or rather learn several setups to have a bigger selection available? In BCS, you use several setups and also trade on various time frames. Just wondering what's the best approach for someone at the beginning of their trading journey? Yeah. Excellent question. <clears throat> Believe it or not, I actually think the best setup, like I, I really want you to learn two setups in the level one program. And what you're actually going to find as you get further and further and further into your education and into, into your sort of studies and various different indicators and tools you can use is that almost every single setup that we use actually derives back to these two basic concepts. The L Tangonator, you're buying the bottom end of a range looking for the 50% rule bounce. 
and the bot trend continuation trade you're in the middle of a trending market state you're going to look and and let's use a bullish one and you're going to uh, look for three higher lows to risk against to get in on that trend continuation move and everything else whether it be you know level two you're going to learn like volume profile setups like jesse james setup that's just a derivative of the el tango nader it's just a different form of it um uh you could have uh moving averages give you like a rainbow cross in the middle of a trending market which in essence could literally be a trend continuation signal and you should be able to see the bot sort of three higher lows if you're thinking long and help you frame that a b c d kind of movement but in essence, every single setup, right, is either a trend continuation move. And really, all this action in here is a consolidation of part of the move. This could be a one minute chart. This could be a 10 minute chart. This could be a weekly chart. Could be a monthly chart. Could be a yearly chart. Doesn't make a difference. I'm looking for those three higher lows to help me get in on this move. And notice there aren't any indicators on this um, image. And I don't think there's any indicators on this image either. Right? If you want to include indicator information to uh, give you more confidence in the signal, totally awesome. And uh, Grim in the level one, he strongly encourages you throw in some indicators uh, that are giving com confirmation signals that this thing is breaking down totally awesome but the point is is that the level one program is designed to teach you one range trade setup so a uh, range trade setup like we said the l tango nader um why do i not see it in here Kind of weird. I guess training range. There we are. El Tanganator. Sorry about that. Where I have a top end of the range, bottom end of the range. I'm looking for that 50% bounce. A lot of my trades are this trade. A lot. And this is basically the first setup that I learned forever ago, like 30 years ago. So a ranging market, looking for that bounce to the 50% roll. And the trending market looking for trend continuation. So to specifically answer your question, coming out of level one program, I want you to know those two frameworks, right? Because really all the El Tango Nader is is saying, do I have trade location? Do I have indicator confirmation? Do I have price structure? Is the price structure that I'm going to risk, is it half of what I'm going to make if the market goes back to the 50% rule? That's all it is. You want to add in various different indicators. You want to add in volume profile. You want to add in moving average relationships. You want to add in gap theory. You want to add in point and figure signaling. That's It's just further derivatives of this basic concept. So, uh, again, don't have a name here, but uh, whoever it was that asked this question, did that help answer your question? Yes, no, maybe so. Well, I'm going to assume that, Brian, that was the best answer I ever heard. <laughs> um. I would really like for you, if you are brand new to this, the very first thing that I want you to learn is this concept of um, W, buying that W, and looking for that 50% tag. And this risk of buying this W 
is half, like if I buy there and I risk to a break here, it's half of what your reward is if you go to the 50% rule. That's, that's the very first thing I ever learned trading commodities forever ago, and it didn't even have any indicator confirmation. Just as simple as that. Buy Ws, this W, it's smaller by about half what you're going to get paid if the market goes back to the 50% rule. That is absolutely critical that you learn that. You want to sprinkle in, uh, oh, look at that. Yes, best answer I ever heard. Fucking A. Since yesterday. <laughs> Are you German? <laughs> All right. Um, so, you know, really, I want you to have one setup that uh, helps you trade range markets and one setup that helps you trade a trending market. It's really that simple. And like I said, all of the setups, like we could actually go through literally every single one of them. And I could say, well, RLZ within RLZ, all this is, is an l tangonator going down, right? There's the 50% rule effect. That's, uh, that target has 61.8, but really 50% rule would be probably better. And look, there's top and, you know, there's a reload zone within a reload zone within a reload zone. But the point here is it's basically the same thing. You know, am up at the top end of the range looking for a move back down to 50% rule. It's the same thing. Um, Hollywood Nick. All Hollywood Nick is is just trend line break, right? So in this particular case, 50% uh, rule as a target. That sounds familiar. Top end of the range. Could we say that this is uh, the same thing as an L tangonator? Yeah, it's the same trade. Top end of the range, momentum divergence. In this case, double divergence. Fractal top, instead of trading an M, take profits at 50% rule. Same thing. So the point here is that all of these setups, they're all basically... I derived off of those two different setups. Okay, uh, that's it for the questions. I didn't think there were that many questions, but great to hear. Let's see, do we have any follow up from us? When using bot setup, I often find myself setting a stop past 5% and once now my stop is set close to 10%. I uh, did not realize until after. All good though, only paper. In these situations, do I simply back off from making these trades as I am risking too much? Does it call for concern? Bob, with a set of uh, futures trading. Um, I think I remember answering this. I mean, you can always uh, drill down the size of your contract. You know, you could go to Forex. You can actually set the size of your trade. So you can sort of figure out, okay, what's 5% risk? We're okay, I'm not allowed to ever break that. Let's take half that number. Okay, it's $37, just hypothetically. And okay, fine, I'll risk a setup where my stop is at $37. Um, with futures contracts, yeah, if you're finding that the size of the formation is to the point where you're risking 10% of your portfolio. And I remember answering this last week, what I said was maybe you have to work your bid down right against the lows and look for that pullback so that it's within that five percent window and then also uh in futures you can consider the mini contracts or the micro contracts you know in the stock market instead of buying a thousand shares you can buy a hundred shares instead of buying a hundred shares you can buy 10 shares i do like the idea of having at least like two of something so then that way you could sell half on a double or sell half on a two to one and then move your stop to scratch on the remaining and you get yourself a pretty powerful position. But yeah, uh, in this case, if the setup itself was risking 10% of your uh, at stake that uh, that you have to work with, then you can't take the trade. It's as simple as that. You're just not allowed to give yourself permission to do it. What would be a good asset to practice setups on lower time frames? You know, ES, um, the crude oil. They seem to work pretty well. Um, currencies. Be a little bit, and I'm talking about the futures contracts. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum futures, still a little bit thin to really trade off a of lower time frames too effectively. You know, during the market hours, during the day, okay. Um, 
if it's on the weekend and stuff, I've noticed that uh, the training gets really choppy. And what I also noticed too is um, is uh, stops get run right, left, and center off of lower time frames in crypto. So yeah, you, you, you almost have to employ the Hogue FU setup um, if you're going to trade crypto off of like one minute, three minute charts, unless. You know, like you saw what I did here, I let this setup really develop. And, you know, I mean, this is Ethereum trading on the weekend, so it's really not that big of a deal. But you can see, you know, this is a three-minute chart. Yeah, you know, I, I, if you can't find setups on three-minute chart, I don't know. I think maybe you're probably pushing too hard. But, you know, you see how this developed. I mean, could I have waited and pulled the trigger there and just risked against the highs? And that would be the classic bot setup? Sure. Look how many candles that took to develop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That will take too long to add all this up. <laughs> um, so the actual signal, 64 times three. So what is that? That's uh, 180, 180 uh, minutes. So what is that? That's about three or four hours this took to develop. And it worked. So you could definitely trade these. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Just be careful trading the futures contracts down on these lower time frames. They're pretty thin. I don't think it's a good idea. But, uh, you know, Paul, for instance, he trades on uh, Binance, um, Ethereum. I think he calls them perpetual swaps and stuff like that. But I don't see any reason why he couldn't practice with those. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay, yeah. All right, so that's cool. Answers are done. Um, got a couple minutes for just any open questions. Any of you YouTubers have any questions? I suppose we can answer that, and then maybe we'll head on our way here. Uh, well, what's going on there? Uh, Hey, magic internet money. I mentioned it and it takes off like a rocket, eh? <laughs> it's $3,300 a piece. Woohoo. Well, maybe uh, maybe Danny's coming back. Who knows? Uh, all right. So, those uh, they're having fun in the lounge talking about that. Um, all all right, let's see what we got here. Bullish on crypto, looking to get in on size. You are, are you? All right, well, go slowly. Make sure you have a plan. Just out of curiosity, Fapa. If my price goes down, what do you? how do you feel? How are you going to feel? And it's great that you think price is going to go up, I guess, or maybe even stabilize. What happens if Bitcoin loses half its value here? Are you going to become suicidal? Uh, I mean, it's cool that you have an opinion. Sounds like you're bullish, so that's awesome. But I better have a plan. Um, probably, uh, Leke, I would even suggest probably the best way for you to approach something like that is to start accumulating call options. You know, um, there are a bunch of stock market proxies now for crypto. Uh, I do know there's Deribit, but I don't think Deribit's open to American uh, customers. But, you know, like uh, a lot of these crypto stocks, if you're really bullish at crypto, this Coinbase, you know, maybe uh, think about going and buying some call options here. It's not a bad idea. It's probably going to be a ton of money to be made here. Probably the uh, level threeers. Uh, Cole says Ledger X is open to Americans for crypto options. Yeah, so maybe go buy some Bitcoin or Ethereum call options. It's not a bad idea. I know, like in, for instance, in Canada, there's these two uh, Bitcoin exchange traded funds. 
uh i to me it doesn't look like these things have bottomed it you know so that's why i ask you uh, mr uh super bowl what are you gonna do i mean it's great that you're bullish and i uh, love your enthusiasm but what are you gonna do if price isn't done going down here yet so be careful there sir i, I mean if anything um we have uh, mr naka mcgowan would probably help you here uh what is the statistical probability that that gap there will be filled in at some point over time <laughs> eddie's getting pretty good at spitting that number out can a level one -er get in on the transparency pack absolutely john the more you do it uh, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt in fact you, you want to uh uh pm me and we can talk a little bit about it on the site um you know i know yeah you know, i i just i'm worried for level oneers because it's such a huge sort of learning curve that you have to go through we have to figure out whether even trading's even for you and it might not be so often what uh what what is a good tell as to whether trading is really in your blood or not is uh if you can make it through that level one program and i start to see you moving on and um you know unfortunately yeah there is money involved which sucks but if you can get into the level two program and you're still like you know i'm super gung-ho i will let people that are in the level two program into our day trader room if you show me things like the transparency pact and you say brian look at i'm journaling every day these are my journal entries i'm super focused i'm super um um you know motivated i've got a trading plan like do you even have a trading plan yet john have you put all that together do you actually have vetted setups or are you still just going through the paper trading uh the setups part do you even know what are you a range trader or are you a trend trader so but uh, the transparency pact is definitely going to help you uh, identify where your weaknesses are do you have a demon log going so a lot of those kind of things people don't really realize all that kind of stuff until they get to the level two level three program where they actually see how difficult a day trader's life is and how much work is actually involved uh yeah okay well that's cool so you know if you're paper trading then you know and you want to you know are you around for the uh the daily briefs and stuff you know you want to throw your uh and you know if anything maybe what i should do is uh ask Sjord if we can have like um transparency packed uh setting on your journal and i'll just sort of like have somewhere on my dashboard everybody who's in the transparency packed and i can see whether you're journaling maybe a notation of the last day that you journaled just so i can see when was the last time you actually updated your journal i don't know something like that we just sort of started it but yeah by all means yeah, yeah. Remember, everybody, the most important thing for me out of this whole experience is to do JoJo's bidding here <laughs> and spirit. That's the most important thing. And she said, Brian, you have the potential to make a big positive change in this world. Uh, she didn't say I was going to. That's how I knew it was for real. She also said that I had to learn how to listen, which I'm not very good at. But if that means john that we're making positive difference in your life and you're getting better at this you know i even put out some clown you know and now unfortunately in crypto you're going to hear tons of this oh i got wrecked oh i'm wiped out oh it sucks oh it's all a scam when it really isn't and i even replied to this person if you're serious about this i have done probably geez probably a thousand maybe even thousands of hours of free content where's our great del moody guy who basically taught himself from absolutely nothing to now he knows more about setups in the market than me 
just by watching our free videos. And I, t I, I replied to the guy, look, and if you're serious, there's no excuses. You just got to do the work. So, Ali, you could be part of the Transparency Be Packed and just be a viewer on YouTube. There's nothing wrong with that. Being part of TRI, being part of the community, does mean that you get the journaling tools and it does mean you get Brian's ear. And it does mean that you have a whole bunch of people that all sort of think and act and look at the market the same way, which helps a lot. But there's no reason why you couldn't be part of the Transparency Pact and just do the whole damn thing on the back of a cocktail napkin. Totally fine. So. Okay, so, uh, you know, good question. Appreciate the uh, question. Uh, I'm not really seeing too many other questions, so I think we'll probably leave it at that for today, everybody. I uh, sure hope you um, you got some value out of uh, the broadcast here today. As I said, one of the ways that I would approach it, especially, you know, look at something like hot. Holy crap. This thing was uh, 20 bucks all the way down to two dollars. How about Mr. Novogratz? Is Mr. Novogratz in the penalty box right now? I bet he is. Uh, so there's always him. There are the Bitcoin ETFs. I think this is another the Bitcoin Pro Shares Bitcoin Strategy ETF. So there you go. Like that, probably the effective way to play this market is to buy call options on these things. Then that way, worst case scenario, if the price doesn't go up, well, you don't lose your shirt. All right. I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, wish me luck with the boy. Uh, appreciate everybody's uh, PMA, and uh, hopefully, I actually had a pretty good demonstration there of uh, what it is that I do in the marketplace and our uh, transparency pact, and what it is I'm trying to help you guys achieve. And uh, being the demonstrator of best practices, just running my small business of trading. This is basically what I do. So, Okay, have yourselves a great day. PMA for the win. All the best. And bye for now.